Perhaps more questions than answers at quarterback for Colorado State as Patrick O'Brien makes the first start of his career, stepping in for the injured Colin Hill tonight as the Colorado State Rams welcome Toledo to Fort Collins. College football primetime on ESPN is presented by Geico. They go lights out to start things here tonight. A long trip west for the Toledo Rockets out of the Mid-American Conference, playing just their third game of the year, and the Colorado State Rams out of the Mountain West at 1-2. and two. Quarterback Colin Hill is done for the year for CSU, so Patrick O'Brien steps into the limelight tonight, Kirk. Yeah, look, Colin Hill, his third ACL injury he suffered last week versus, versus Arkansas. Patrick O'Brien steps in, making his debut, first college start for CSU. Look for him to have a big night tonight. There's a lot more experience for Toledo. They've got Mitch Guadani at quarterback, the redshirt senior. I think Guadani last year steps in for Logan Woodside. Didn't finish last season due to injury. This year injured in the first game, but threw a career high last week versus Murray State. 266 yards. See if he can have another big night for the Toledo Rockets. It's a big week here before the start of conference play for Colorado State at one and two. And Mike Bobo, the head coach in his fifth season, a record of 25 and 29 as the head coach here, went seven and six in each of his first three seasons, three and nine a year ago, and off to an ominous one and two start. So a win tonight gets them back to 500 and points them in the right direction with their conference opponents looming. Yeah, and a conference that looks a lot tougher this year, right? Utah State, Boise State looks good as well. San Diego State, Hawaii. This is a Mountain West conference that Colorado State, no, they's gotta be, they have to be clicking on all cylinders. So it's Toledo in the white with the yellow helmets. And Colorado State, in a nod to the school's history, wearing orange tonight. Their colors are green, gold, and white. But it's a throwback night, an orange out night tonight here in Fort Collins. And we are underway where it'll be first and 10 at the 25-yard line for CSU. So last week, a game where they hung close against Arkansas. They eventually lost 55-34. That was where Colin Hill tore his ACL for the third time. So Patrick O'Brien, former Nebraska Cornhusker, steps in. And look, relax. That would be if I'm Coach Bobo, I'm telling Patrick O'Brien, just go relax. Have fun. You've been doing this your entire career, high school, college. This is no different. Your first start at Colorado State, relax, utilize your weapons. A handoff to start, and it's a give to the senior, Marvin Kinsey, who carried 20 times for 180 yards last week in the loss to the Arkansas Razorbacks. I think we're going to get a heavy dose of the run game today, Mike. If you're Colorado State, you got a new quarterback starting. How do I get him acclimated to the game quickly? I think it's really running the football, quick screen passes, quick throws early to get him settled in. So there it is, as you said, a short pass to start. And he hits Dante Wright, the freshman from the greater Pensacola, Florida area, who's been a revelation for them in the first three games. Yeah, Mike, that was like a free throw, right? Like basketball shooters, they go out, they hit a free throw. Now they're in the game, they're in rhythm. That's what that last pass was, a quick screen pass to Wright, getting him into the game. Feeling very comfortable early on. Ball, it's been throw the screen passes, it's been the quick game. That's how you get a quarterback in making his first start. How, that's how you get him settled in. He stepped in third quarter when Colin Hill, the redshirt junior, went down with a third ACL tear of his left knee in his career. Pass to the outside is to Nate Craig Myers, the Auburn transfer, making his CSU debut. Wow, what a throw <laughs> from Patrick O'Brien. One hash all the way to the other. And Nate Craig Myers, the number two wide receiver coming out of high school back in 2016, making his Colorado State debut. I know he's an excited Ram over there getting loved up by his teammates. 
had to sit out the first three games after he played in the first three last year. Marvin Kinsey has space up the middle and speed to go along with it. He's taken down inside the 15-yard line. A huge burst for the senior. It all starts with patience. You got to have patience at the running back position. And Marvin Kinsey watched him last week versus Arkansas. He wears that number five like another Arkansas great, Darren McFadden. I know it's different teams, but the running style very similar here at Colorado State. Marvin Kinsey been making big plays so far this season. Last week, second play of the game, he ripped off a 75-yard touchdown run. Throw to the end zone is incomplete. The pass intended for Warren Jackson, a guy who in these type of situations is a huge asset for them with his height and his build. Well, I just didn't like that throw. That's, come on, Patrick O'Brien. You've got a 6'6 wide receiver out there going to get Samuel Womack, number 19, at 5'10". That's an eight-inch difference. Throw the ball up. Alley-oop time. <laughs> I know basketball seasons are right around the corner, but if I've got a 6'6 wide receiver, I'm throwing up a lob pass. Jalen Thomas in it running back here for CSU, second down. Right in motion, he's always a candidate to get the ball in his hands. Instead, the run is off to the right side as Thomas is flattened around the five yard line. <sighs> Devastating block there, I know not a lot of people saw it. But Adam Prentiss, number 46, here, he is a fullback. Yes, there are fullbacks still in college. Outstanding block on the last play, but look, for your Toledo, you got to settle in. Settle in so far, new quarterback, you're still getting used to him, but you got to be able to settle in. But here, third and goal, I'm looking for number nine, if I'm Colorado State, number nine again, Warren Jackson at the bottom of the screen. O'Brien with an empty backfield across the middle. And it's an easy connection. Jackson, the junior, has six for CSU with a wide open score. It's all about number nine. I said you get down here in the red zone at the bottom of the screen. He just runs an in underneath route. And it's easy. That's pitch and catch. Your first drive as a Colorado State Ram as a starter, Patrick O'Brien finding Warren Jackson for an easy touchdown over the middle. Caden Camper's extra point is good. First career start for O'Brien at QB. The throws were easy. Starter at quarterback, Colorado State getting the ball first. Didn't want to be too complex. The offense was simple and effective. Yeah, it was just getting guys going early. Nate Craig Myers, his first, first catch as a Colorado State Ram, did Marvin Kinsey, the big play home run threat at running back. And I swear, you get down to the goal line, you got to make sure you cover the six foot six wide receiver at Warren Jackson. That was an easy pitch and catch. Patrick O'Brien to Jackson for the touchdown. First drive. That's the way you want to do it as a starting quarterback in your first start. The six-yard score finished the drive. That big run from Kinsey went for 37. That got them inside the red zone. Colorado State one and two. And Toledo one and one on the year. An opening week loss against Kentucky. A week two bye. And last week, a win where they took care of business as expected. 45-0 against Murray State. So really right now, they do have some sure things, like their quarterback, Mitch Guadani, but overall as a team, head coach Jason Candle says he's still got a lot of questions. Yeah, he's got a lot of questions, but you feel more comfortable having a quarterback that has played. And we're talking about some big time games. Look, last year, Guadani did not finish the season due to injury, but he feels more comfortable with him this year, especially after his performance last week. He motions the tight end Gilliam into the backfield to set up the run. And when they do go to the air tonight, he'll have a lot of good options. Guadani last week, as you just saw moments ago, 266 yards was a career high for him. Well, that's the one thing about the Toledo offense. They want to go fast. And they're able to go fast because of the quarterback and his, his ability to make checks at the line of scrimmage.
Hand off to Bryant Kobach, the sophomore from Holland, Ohio. Transferred from Kentucky after taking a red shirt there a couple of years ago. Now third and short. This defensive line is where Colorado State defensively is a little bit short. They're without Toby McBride, one of their tackles for the second straight game out with a concussion. So Manny Jones and that defensive line have a lot more work on their shoulders tonight. They're from Colorado State, follow the quarterback. And they swarm quickly to push back against the run. The Rockets go ground. Three straight tries and go backwards on third down. Now I want you to watch the safety here, the senior from Gardena, Jamal Hicks, just shoots through the gap, and he just finds the ball carrier, Kobach. That's easy. Let's go find ball, go see ball, and go make play, and you get excited about it. Nice little opening drive offensively and now defensively for Colorado State. Bailey Flint is on to punt, the third-year starter who's averaging about 44 yards a kick. The native Australian upped his average about three yards this year. And the coverage team does a great job to get downfield and make a play. Tyson Anderson in pursuit puts the Rams back inside the 20. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. If you've ever been to Disneyland, Main Street, USA, and said, hey, this kind of looks like Fort Collins, Colorado, well, you're on to something. A Fort Collins native, Harper Goff, worked with Walt Disney, designed that, and the City Hall, Bank Building, several others there at Disneyland are modeled after buildings in Fort Collins. The old firehouse, the former Linden Hotel, Union Pacific Railroad Station, all inspirations for Main Street, USA, a beautiful downtown area here at Fort Collins. 7-0 Colorado State at home. Along with Kirk Morrison, I'm Mike Cousins. Glad to have you with us here late into the night. The MAC meets the Mountain West. And it was a touchdown on the opening drive for CSU. They start inside their own 20 as Kinsey, the senior running back, takes it across to the 21. Last week, collectively, ran for 220 yards as a team. Their most in a few years. Let's see if they can replicate that here against a team that has high expectations, not only from itself, but also from the preseason poll coming out of the Mid-American Conference. O'Brien on the slant, and it's tipped off the hands of the redshirt sophomore E.J. Scott. A dangerous play. Luckily, nobody behind to grab it. Yeah, very dangerous early on for Patrick O'Brien. A great first drive, and in there, that's just an RPO. I think he missed the read. Well, definitely, we know he missed the throw. Relax, just calm down. First drive, I still think he's a little bit anxious, but you gotta get him going early on. That first drive was great. Now finding ways to get the ball to the outside. The screen passes early on have been effective. One deep safety is O'Brien. First time starter goes back. And throws it away. And we'll go to the studio for an update with Kevin Connors. Kevin putting together an attempt to hold off OK State from winning six straight in Austin, the longest streak by any school ever at Texas. Toledo getting the ball back here, looking to set themselves up with great starting field position. They'll be out around the 40-yard line after on their first drive, three runs and a punt. They've got it when we come back. In Colorado, Toledo has the ball down 7 nothing. A couple of huge games today. Three top 25 matchups around the country. One going on right now. Georgia up over Notre Dame. 13-10 fourth quarter with college football playoff implications. Auburn a winner over AM. And the stunner of the day earlier today on ESPN2. 
UCF falls at Pitt with a Philly special. No, no, no. Coach Narduzzi that. said it was the Pitt special. <laughs> <laughs> so Pitt and Philly, they come together today for Western, a nice little play. Western PA is stealing <laughs> Philly's thunder. Shakif Seymour takes the first down carry out to the edge. So four plays on offense plus a punt, four runs. There's a lot lost at wide receiver this year for Toledo. Oh, they, they lost 78 touchdowns for a career for a lot of players. It was, been, it was Johnson, Johnson and Thompson. Those guys are gone. So it's McKinley, Lewis, Phillips, and Mitchell. They're the guys that have to pick up the slack. Only eight career touchdowns combined between those guys. But look, Mitch Quinani putting the offense more on his back. He's now getting those guys up to speed for the big-time play. Guadani, the redshirt senior at quarterback, hands it off for a fifth straight snap. And Kirk, those wide receivers, it's not just the experience that they lost, but it's where those guys are now that's even more impressive. Yeah, Deontay Johnson is a, the starting wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, elevated this week to now being a starter. And then you look at just the way the offense kind of went last year for Toledo. They were big shots. They were guys who ran the in-cut routes, the out routes. We haven't seen him throw a pass today. And finally here on third down, let's see what Guadani dials up. Desmond Phillips, their most experienced receiver in motion. That pass nearly intercepted as Guadani had to get rid of it quickly. Jan Philip Bombeck, the senior defensive end, nearly took it away. Got a flag here, Mike. I don't know if I got an offsize defense. But it looked, I saw a bunch of orange jerseys look to be just a little too anxious to get across the ball there. A referee tonight, Mike Catone. Offsides, number six of the defense, five yard penalty. We play third down. And those are the plays you can't have, Mike. You cannot, I mean, that wasn't easy. You just gave up five yards because you're a little too anxious. You gotta calm down a little bit. I know, look, Coach Jansen, the defensive coordinator, dialing up a blitz, and everybody's excited because you're on the move. You're gonna try to sack the quarterback. Stay on line first, bringing up a third and one. Well, it didn't trigger an automatic first down with the yardage, but it did allow Toledo another opportunity to run, and they're short again. So this short-staffed defensive line for Colorado State so far has proved to be quite stout against Toledo. I'm just shocked right now. When I think of Toledo, I think of a senior quarterback in Mitch Guadani. I'm thinking at some point you're going to put the ball in the air. They have not thrown a pass yet, Mike. They've got to throw a pass. That's not your offense. You're going up against a team that has really struggled in the secondary and struggled guarding tight ends. Fourth down and one. I think this is the play that really kickstarts this offense. But you got to get some push up front. Right at midfield, taking a risk on the road. Seymour lowers the shoulders, and the junior from Cleveland picks up the fourth down conversion. Well, Seymour needed all six foot, 215 pounds to find that first down marker. But he got this in the backfield, and he just leaned forward. You're six foot, 215 pounds. You just put your head forward, and you just find as much yard as you can get. Guadani's back to throw. He's a very capable scrambler, but he's got nowhere to run. There is a late flag down as he's brought to the turf, trying to scramble away from the pressure brought by Jalen Bates. Now, did we get a face mask there late? Looked like it was Bates. I don't know if they got a... It was from the far side official trying to see what they saw over there. Personal foul, face mask, number 34 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, I saw that far side official throw the, the flag. I think they got the wrong number. It was number one, Jalen Bates. They said 34. They said 34, but I thought it was number one, Jalen Bates. I saw that helmet move just a little bit, and that's a, another penalty on a drive for Colorado State defensively. Whistle stop play here as they've got first and 10 on the move, looking for their first points tonight at the Colorado State 35-yard line. 
I'm just waiting for the first pass attempt for Toledo. <laughs> we didn't get one on the last play, and this is that area of the field, Mike, where this is where Toledo takes opportunities to get the ball down the field. This is where Coach Candle, that offense, they try to get the ball to the end zone. I think the officials got to find where to mark the ball here, too. Jason Candle, the Ohio native, from just about 30 minutes outside of Youngstown. It's the blue-collar northeast part of the state. Graduate of Mount Union, won a couple of Division III national championships there, and became the head coach at Toledo back in the winter of 2015. So with the ball now properly marked, the Rockets can restart their march. There's Denzel McKinley Lewis alert him for a shot down the field. Seymour off to the left side. He's got a first down as he lowers the shoulder and takes it to the 23. Woo. <laughs> Seymour already, he's, the way that he's playing this game, he's trying to get more carries, right? He wants them to be able to run the ball this way to open up the pass, I guess. And he's been a really capable rusher. Now in his third season with the Rockets, he's run for at least 500 yards in each of his first two campaigns. Well, I think he's in a competition still with Brian Kobach, number 22. So when you get your opportunity to get those carries, you want to make the most of them. After the run, second and seven. And Kobach, the Kentucky transfer, who last year led the Rockets with 14 touchdowns. Takes it off to the right side to set up third and short. Anything that you think they're seeing here that they've been so run heavy? Well, I just think, first of all, it's been tackling for Colorado State over the last couple of weeks. They've been very poor at it. Inside the 10 as Kobach takes back-to-back -back carries. First and goal Toledo trying to even the score with about five minutes left in the first quarter. Well, i got to be impressed. Here's a team that loves to throw the ball, and yet it's been the run game that's really got this offense going. On that last play, we call it no edge, no chance. Colorado State's defense, no edge. And if you're Kobach, you just find green grass. Nice little methodical drive here by Toledo. Guadani drops it off. A wide open score for Kobach. The running back hits pay dirt. Toledo's one shy of CSU. You know, Mike, I was waiting on that first pass, and we got it. Watch the reverse pivot. He shows the fly series. It reverse pivots all the way out on the outside. That's just wide open. Brian Kobach, that's, that's easy. That's stealing for a running back. His first reception of the year is a touchdown for Kobach. Seven seven Toledo on the road. Locked up with Colorado State anymore. He went from backup duty to basically seeing the picture as there's not going to be a spot for you at quarterback no matter where you are in the depth chart. Let's be honest, Adrian Martinez took that job before he even got there. He steps up, takes a hit, and his pass is short of Jackson, who even if he made the catch would have been short of the marker. And this is what I expected on third down. I expected a ton of pressure to force Pat O'Brien to get the ball out as quickly as possible. And so far, there haven't been many opportunities on third down, but a good job by Toledo's defense sending the pressure and forcing Patrick O'Brien with an errant throw. Ryan Stonehouse, one of the best punters in the country a year ago, has his gunners on target to the 15-yard line. That's got the crowd on their feet here in Fort Collins. It's all about timing, Mike. You gotta have perfect timing because that ball's hanging in the air, but you gotta love the effort. You gotta love the hit. Perfectly legal hit. Trust me, I never wanted to be a punt returner just for those reasons right there. You gotta be a bad dude to be back there. Outstanding play by Colorado State. Brandon Crossley getting downfield to lower the shoulder, make an impact, and allow no return for Toledo as they start this drive on the 17. So let's see here, Kirk, if they stay as committed to the run as they have been 
so far in this quarter. And we got whistles, flags all over the place. <laughs> Motion from Toledo. I wonder who they, who's the guilty culprit here? It's like the whole entire offensive line jumped off sides. Ball start, number 57 of the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Next Saturday, we'll have number six, Ohio State and Nebraska from Lincoln. The Buckeyes have won the last four against the Cornhuskers, outscoring them a plenty. 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on ABC and the ESPN app in our Saturday night football game presented by Wells Fargo. Wadani's got time. He tests single coverage, and his throw is too far. Looking for Bryce Mitchell, who's another big target. 6-3-207. I'm not sure Bryce Mitchell even saw that pass thrown. So early on, the passing game kind of been out of sync for Toledo, but they haven't done it much. It's been about the run game, and I think they saw last week versus Arkansas, this Colorado State defense had a tough time making tackles. They were a poor tackling team last week, and they have been throughout this early part of the season. Is that something they want to exploit, and then maybe in the second half, Start taking the shots down the field. Flag comes from the sideline again as this carry just gets to the 15 yard line on the handoff to Kobach. That's uh, just the illegal formation. You got two guys lined up on the line of scrimmage. That's easy. The near side official saw tight end on the ball and a wide receiver. Illegal formation, more than four in the backfield on the offense. That penalty would be declined. Third down. So as Toledo is struggling here, you mentioned some of the big plays that the CSU defense has given up. Especially last week against Arkansas, the Hogs had touchdowns of 62, 59, and 24 yards. But Toledo has not been able to capitalize so far and rip off any big plays. Yeah, but today, watch number 24 and number 7. Tron Folsom and Jamal Hicks, two guys who will be what I call rat players. They're what we call spies on Guadani. Who is a very capable runner, but hasn't had a lot of room to navigate outside of the pocket. So as CSU comes in one and two, Week one against Colorado, they trailed by three at the half. They got outscored by 18 in the second. And then last week against Arkansas, tied at 34 going into the fourth quarter. And they got blanked by three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. And just some plays, especially one in particular, where <laughs> there were a lot of missed tackles. And they know that they've got to be better if they want to be competitive in the Mountain West. They just got to be a better tackling team. They have to. Especially when you get into situations like this, third down. Mitch Guadani, he's going to look. And if it's not there, he is going to pull that football down. And right there, number 24, Tron Folsom, he's going to be the guy. He's going to be the spy. The grad transfer from Troy, 6'2", 209. He's got one of the fastest guys on that defense for Colorado State. He's going to have the job of trying to spy Guadani if he gets out of the pocket. So Mike Catone, the referee has gone over to get on the headset as he talks to the replay booth to make sure they have the spot correct on that last play with the penalty being declined. Minute 31, first quarter, Toledo and Colorado State even at seven. Toledo, Mountain West, and hopes are high for them this year. They're one of the best group of five schools. Look at over the last five years. Boise State in there, App State, huge win today. Huge win. <laughs> For App State and Eli Drinkwitz, San Diego State in there, and then Toledo is right there in terms of wins over the last five years. But there wasn't much yardage gained to be spoken of on that play. So the officials, again, are just looking to make sure they've got the yardage marked off properly here to set up our next play. The interesting call here 
for defensive coordinator John Jancic. After Colorado further State. review, the ball should be spotted at the 14-yard line. Third down. I still want to see what this call is going to be here. Because Guadani, we've seen him throughout his career, first these last couple of years, that if the ball or the his throw is not there, if his guy is covered, he can extend plays. He can use his legs. He can pick those first downs up. And this is a situation. When we spoke with Brian George, the Toledo defensive coordinator this week, not having a lot of college tape on O'Brien, he said they had to go back to some of his high school film just to see what his strengths and weaknesses were. So third and nine, he unleashes, looking for first down yardage. There is a flag. Pass interference. Pass interference. Number 13 on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Chris McDonald, the true freshman out of Miami in coverage. Dan, if you're going to pick on somebody, you pick on the true freshman. I think it's just right there that put the hand out. But honestly, Mike, I think that's good defense. I don't know if that's to me, <laughs> and this is the former defender of me, that ball's underthrown. So I don't know if he could really interfere with a pass that seems to be underthrown. I thought it was good coverage, just unfortunate that the referee official standing right there said, you know what, he impeded the progress. I just didn't see enough. Thought it was a good defensive play. And a timeout, timeout taken by the Rams. Colorado State, this is their first time out of the half. To go back to your point about the defensive pass interference as well, it has to be an obvious intent to impede. I just didn't see that there. I didn't so see it. It's, <laughs> that's a tough one, you know, especially a true freshman just trying to do his job. So Colorado State one and two as they get set for Mountain West play. We saw some great Mountain West action last night on the blue turf in Boise, and the Broncos getting a win there. San Jose State, how about this? They led Arkansas almost all this game, 31-24, a huge win. And Wyoming had an opportunity to go to 4-0 for the first time since 1996. And they fall against the Golden Hurricane in a very intriguing matchup tonight, Aztecs and Aggies. It's Jackson again on a big burst. Down to the 25-yard line for CSU. Yeah, at some point, Toledo, you're going to have to double Warren Jackson because that's Patrick O'Brien's favorite target. It seems like every pass that he's thrown today has been in Warren Jackson's vicinity. Pick up of 22 on that play, and they trust Kinsey through the middle. You like the tempo of this, of this offense. Even that last throw, though, to Jackson was not perfectly on target. Yeah, look, he's getting used to it, right? You get your first start in college, FBS. Got to get the nerves out a little bit, but I think he's progressing as this game has gone along. But utilizing, I think, the run game here has really been, it's going to be beneficial for him the rest of this game. The coaching staff said O'Brien at quarterback took about 95% of the first team reps this week. Kenzie nowhere to go. How about that tackle? Bursting right through the line. Saeed Holt, the linebacker, brings that play to an end in an instant. I had an old linebacker coach used to always say, if you see space, you run space. And he saw space, and he ran space, tackle for loss. That's just doing your job. Saeed Holt, six foot, 195 pound sophomore from Pittsburgh, PA. And you're going to need some of those plays, those negative plays against Colorado State, force them behind the chains. And like I mentioned, how do you handle third down? Where's the pressure going to come from if you're Toledo to force Patrick O'Brien to make a quick throw? His throw is low and incomplete. So that's been a problem for him tonight, intended for Cameron Butler, the tight end. Another thing, too, that I've noticed a couple of times when he drops back to throw, he only looks at one player. Yeah, but he's rushing to throw, too, right? 
and that's all fundamentals. And that's what Coach Bobo is telling them right there. Okay, look at what you got, son. Look what you – you got to quit rushing the throw, set your feet, and be confident. You've got this. And I said it before, making his first college start, just relax. Make the plays that you do in practice. Bring it over to the game. Caden Camper, the freshman walk-on kicker. Elevates this ball and knocks it through. His try from 40 gives the Rams the lead. NFL. Get with the countdown crew on ESPN, the ESPN app 10 Eastern, because we all want to know what Daniel Jones is going to do for the Giants, but really the big one this week, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Ravens, Chiefs. We're looking for, is that a new AFC rivalry game possibly? Chiefs, Ravens, the reigning MVP, Patrick Mahomes, taking on the guy who I say he's got next, next, he's got next, Lamar Jackson. Let everybody know that he's doing a good job for a running back. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the, I think, the best shy to point that out. Oh, he's going to let everybody know. Yeah, I'm doing a good job as a running back, right, everybody? <laughs> CSU taking a three-point lead on a 40-yard field goal. Toledo's going to try and answer, but first to the studio, here's Kevin Connors. And how does that make Colorado State feel? They were tied 34 all going into the fourth quarter, lost 55-34, and San Jose State is a winner. Yeah, the fighting Spartans of San Jose. It's going to be a good night for Lawrence fan. <laughs> Not fun if you're an Arkansas fan, I'll tell you that. SEC down. With a redshirt senior at quarterback here, coming off a career high in passing yards last week. Granted, it was against Murray State, so not the same level of competition here. Have you been surprised that they've run the ball 14 times and only thrown twice? It just looks like a different team than I saw a week ago. You know, I watched them on tape, and I'm like, wow, the ball's flying around. It was screen passes. It was shots down the field. This is a totally different Toledo offense that I came into this game expecting to see. Wadani, at quarterback, missed the final five games of the season last year with a broken collarbone. So his last go around, a lot to prove. The redshirt senior out of Hudson, Ohio. It'll be third down and about four. Well, I know they want to shorten up the game, right? They want to shorten the game a little bit, especially coming on the road. Try to run the ball and open up those throwing lanes. But I will put more on my senior quarterback. I put more on his shoulder, especially here on third down. Give him just a little bit of time. Let him run his, make his magic. Ten defenders within about five yards of the line of scrimmage. Short throw and it's dropped. Seymour had some space to run with and some blockers ahead of him. And instead it's a quick drive and a punt upcoming for Toledo. I can't say enough about the Colorado. Is it here as well? <laughs> no complaints from us. Play fake, O'Brien's hit as he lets it go. And there is a flag with Jackson having the pass go in and out of his right hand. Samuel Womack, the junior corner in coverage for Toledo. Now the one earlier on McDonald I thought was kind of ticky-tack, but this one, Samuel Womack, this is a pass, pass interference, interference for sure. On the defense, number 19, 15-yard field, automatic first down. Yeah, you just... I think you got to just really watch Womack, and it's the right arm. He had that right arm hooked of Warren Jackson down the field. But like I've said it before, if I'm the safety, I'm leaning toward number nine because that's where Patrick O'Brien, when he drops back, that's where he's been throwing the football all night. Nine of his 13 throws have gone to number nine, Warren Jackson. Loaded up to run. The Rockets sniff it out just one yard for Kinsey. And now flags flying everywhere. There's a bit of a brouhaha post whistle. I think we may have a couple ejections. I saw a couple punches thrown. See all those extra flags over there. I count five. 
Well, these officials got to sort that out. That's And it's uh, honestly, it's really uncalled for. For what? <laughs> I mean, it's a nice little game. Well, let's be fair. Is a punch ever called for in no, a sporting but event? It's just saying, well, <laughs> everybody wants to be tough, right? You want to be tough after the play. I get it. You're jawing, but coach say, hey, you're, you're worth more than that. And now you're, you're costing your team, you know, 15 yards, possible ejections. Now you're really hurting your team. Just not needed. You know, control your emotions. You're on the road. Five different flags. So I know the officials saw a lot going on, but wasn't even needed. We've had 21 flags hit the turf tonight. Five on this play. Look, I, I just for what? Everybody wants to be a tough guy and goes a like a forearm or a punch. Terrence Taylor, the sophomore defensive end, 56, right in the middle of that for Toledo. And they didn't have great field position to start on this drive either for CSU. Dante Wright, their freshman punt returner, he's let a couple go. The last two kicks from Bailey Flynn have gone for 72 and 60. That's been an extra 30 yards tacked on. That over the course of the game, that adds up for CSU, trying to build their lead currently at 10-7. Yeah, you got to make those plays to help out your offense. Help out, remember, your quarterback. This is his first start. You don't want to back him up. You want to keep him in an area where he's still got the whole playbook to kind of work with. But this replay, you got to see all these flags and, and kind of figure it all out. They're going to have to put the game story in the newspaper tomorrow on the front of the sports <laughs> section, but the penalties in the agate section in about size one font with how many flags we've had so far. I think it all starts over here at the top with the wide receiver cornerback. Just kind of finishing the block. Number three, I think it's EJ Scott. And that's just a little jaw, and I get it. You know, wide receiver, cornerback, fights to this, but it's always the other guys, right? It's always the, the crew coming to save a guy. And we've not yet had four elapsed minutes of game time in this quarter. However, real time, this quarter has taken 30 minutes so far. Granted, there is a lot to sort out on this play. After the play, personal foul, number 56 on the defense, throwing a punch. Number 56 has just qualified. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Terrence Taylor, sophomore defensive end from Chicago. And in a fight like that, it's not always the first guy who throws the punch <laughs> that gets in trouble, but he was one of the first that the officials saw. But it didn't involve him. <laughs> he just come over there instigating. And he's fired up, but he should be fired up at his own self for messing up. That, that's on him. No one asked him to go over to that and get into that, that little scuffle. And so if I'm Coach Candle, say, hey, look, that's on you. Yeah, you got to escort him to the locker room. He's got to get off the field. Plenty of time here for O'Brien. With nowhere to go, he runs away and throws it away. Taylor was not only angry coming off the field, but apparently a little confused as to where he needed to end up, and that's the locker room. Well, just, you hurt your team. Right, you get the scuffle going on, but that's between, you know, EJ Scott, number three, the wide receiver. Okay, he's over on the other side, and then Taylor's just right there. There's no need for the, the push and the punch. I'm watching 56 the whole time, and that's just, and watch the flags fly when that punch right there, that punch right there, right in front of the officials, too. Right in front. What are you proving? Nothing. Kinsey's got eight or nine around the edge for the Rams. And the drive continues, right? And I think one of the biggest things so far is you're watching this Colorado State offensive line 
really starting to push and get great push up front against that defensive line of Toledo. Marvin Kinsey starting to find some holes, and we've not seen him. All he thinks is a little bit of a crease, and he could take it the distance. He's having a nice night so far. Through 20 minutes, averaging almost eight yards a carry. Pocket collapses as O'Brien goes down. Grabbed from behind by Saeed Holt. Terrence Taylor just ejected for throwing a punch. The sophomore defensive end for Toledo. Took a while to get off the field in frustration as he leaves. Yeah, upset because he's let his team down. And I'd be upset too because you felt like, oh, they're picking on me. But you got to walk away from those situations. You're more valuable to your team out there on the field than proving a point. And that's something that Coach Candle will talk about after the game, especially when they get back to Toledo. That leaves the defense a little short-handed, but a great stop on first down. Second down throw, and again, it's Jackson. The ball goes his way for the 11th time tonight. And we'll go to the studio for an update with Kevin. That's got to be a nice feeling for Jake Fromm. You go back to his first career start in 2017. That was against Notre Dame, and that was one where he didn't play well. Georgia only won by one. And now a much better feeling. A top 10 matchup there, early college football playoff implications. We're almost midway through the second quarter here at Fort Collins, Colorado. And the Rams of Colorado State up by three, a field goal of the difference as they move here in what has been a penalty marred game so far. Plenty of flags, delays, and one defensive ejection as Terrence Taylor, the D end, has been ejected for Toledo. They've got play action heavy on this drive. The throw intended for Nate Craig Myers. That could be the third defensive pass interference flag against Toledo tonight. Womack appears to be the guilty party for the second time. There's an easy call for the officials. Samuel Womack again, a guy who they've been picking on. Pass Just interference, number 19 on the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Just, he's not even looking back at the ball. That's, that's an easy call. He's just face guarding. Almost two hands wrapped around Nate Craig Myers, who's trying to make his stamp on this offense, or put his stamp on this offense. This is Colorado State debut, but seeing Patrick O'Brien throw away from Warren Jackson to Nate Craig Myers. See if they go back to that. Jackson up top, Craig Myers at the bottom of the formation. Looking for Jackson. There's collision with him in the end zone. And a late flag comes from the back of the end zone. Toledo's defense is imploding on this drive. Yeah, it's imploding, but that's the second call. That's probably going to go against Chris McDonald Jr. That's, that's an easy call. That ball's in the air, and McDonald makes contact with Warren Jackson. Another pass interference. That's four so far in the game on Toledo. Pass interference, number 13 on the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. There it is right there. He's already, he's, he's hugging him <laughs> before the ball even got there. The true freshman has to learn. Just you can't panic in those situations. But I've also got to go ask Brian George, defensive coordinator, that if I see Warren Jackson all alone by himself, we just got a double team. I, I take my chances one on one with the other receivers for Colorado State. But number nine is not going to beat me one on one. I'm going to put a double team on him, put two or three guys on him if I have to. O'Brien goes under center, hands it off for Kinsey. There's a flag along the near side. And you know what's got to be even more painful, too, is their cornerbacks coaches, Hank Poteet, 
who spent 10 years in the league. Yeah. <laughs> but when you got young players, you got to get them in those situations. One thing I learned when the ball's in the air is not to panic. Play through the receiver's hands, and right now they're just making contact Illegal before the ball gets there. On, on the offense, more than four in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. We play first down. The penalty flag giveth, and the flag taketh away that time for the Rams. So after the flag, they're backed up to the eight-yard line. O'Brien looking for Jackson. Single coverage, jump ball, tipped, and incomplete. That time, the freshman McDonald stands tough at 5'10 against the 6'6 junior receiver. And that's, that's a better job, right? That's a better job because he was patient. He didn't feel like he was rushed. He didn't panic when the ball was in the air. He stood his ground, showed an outstanding leap, and got that left hand in there. It's a terrific job bouncing back by the true freshman McDonald. A lot of the early throws tonight from O'Brien in his first career start. We're off target. Got to be pinpoint here inside the 10. Timeout taken by the Rams with the play clock dwindling. Timeout, Colorado State. This is their second timeout of the half. Rams by three, and knocking on the doorstep. Season Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. Well, this drive for CSU started at the nine. Three major penalties, 15 yards or more. One ejection, Toledo's Terrence Taylor. This drive has taken so long, a weather front has moved through. It started raining and stopped. Jason Candle not too happy about it. Timeout was taken by the Rams. Second down, and Kinsey gets him to the four. Where do you think they go here? Kinsey has been good, one in the ball, but they've also got huge targets who are coming back onto the field here for third and goal. Yeah, you mentioned the number nine and number four. Nate Craig Myers, number four. Warren Jackson, number nine. Earlier in the game, the first touchdown of the game was Warren Jackson, a nice little under route, crossing route, wide open. Trying to figure out, do you go back to that type of play? Watch Jackson, he's tucked under by the tight end. He releases as O'Brien rolls, but he's not open. Throws it to him anyway, and it's fourth down. And a late flag as well. Why am I not surprised? I truly don't think we've gone more than three plays in this game without a penalty flag. On the night, eight penalties for 90 yards against Toledo. Four penalties for 30 yards against Colorado State. Was an illegal man downfield, or what? Are they? Ineligible receiver downfield. I don't know. Ineligible what? downfield. Yeah. Number 69 on the offense. That penalty would be declined. Fourth down. Such a late call. <laughs> I mean, that play was pretty much over before the officials threw the flag. So another field goal opportunity for Colorado State. Wasn't a lot of room downfield with which to be ineligible there. But it's Caden Camper, the freshman on this drive from 22. Got it. And we still got seven minutes to go, second quarter. People affected by Hurricane Dorian, your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Go to redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate now. 
Canvas Stadium is the side here in Fort Collins, Colorado, along with Kirk Morrison, Mike Cousins. The Rams of CSU have just extended their lead from three to six on a short field goal from the freshman Caden Camper, and they get set to kick it away and put Toledo back on offense. We'll see if the Rockets go to the air a little bit more here when they take it out to the 25. But first, a studio update with Kevin. Ah, uh, you never know what's going to happen this late into the night. It can always be quite interesting as the eyes of the football world turn out to the West Coast. Pac-12 after dark. Pac-12 after dark. Here, here we are with the Mountain West and the MAC after dark. First down yardage there for the sophomore Bryant Kobach, transfer from Kentucky. This game has been marred by penalties so far. There's just been no rhythm. Very sloppy first half on both sides. With Donnie loading up, and his first big throw of the night is complete to Bryce Mitchell. We wondered when it would come, and there it is, the redshirt senior to the junior for 56 yards. And Mike, my, my only question is why, what took so long? What took so long? That's the advantage that you have if you're Toledo, and it took you all the way to the six-minute mark in the second quarter before you unleashed the deep throw. Guadani's on the run, and he's into the end zone untouched. Exactly what Colorado State feared bites them there, and the game is even at 13. That's three plays and a touchdown. That's how simple the game plan should have been for Toledo. That's what Guadani can do. That's the arm that he possesses, and he's also got some big-time wide receivers. That's how you answer Toledo. When we sat with John Jancic, the defensive coordinator for CSU yesterday. He said specifically a couple of guys, Tron Folsom, the linebacker, Jamal Hicks, were going to be spies. They had to get ready so quickly here. It's possible nobody was thinking about Guadani. No, nobody was thinking about him, but you got to be you got to be in a situation where you always got to know where number six is at. You, you got to. And he's a threat in the red zone. At that time, Tron Folsom, a guy who I've watched the last couple weeks on tape, he just missed him. He did not have outside leverage. He let Gordani get on the outside of him. No edge, no chance. That's an easy touchdown. Quick three-play drive for Toledo. Well, Gordani's a redshirt senior now who graduated in May with his degree in marketing, coming off of a shortened campaign a year ago at Fresno State, suffered one of two documented concussions that he's endured. And then against Western Michigan, right before Halloween, a broken collarbone ended his season. He missed the final five games of the year. And after shoulder surgery, he couldn't lift weights for five months. So Eli Peters took over last year for him, but it's all back on Guadani's shoulders this year for a Toledo team looking to go to two and one. I just think that last week you build off of a career game, right? 266 yards in the air, a career high for Guadani. And what I saw just the first couple weeks of the season, Mike, and I know it's only a small sample size. They've only played two games, right? You, your first game, you're going against Kentucky, then you wait, get a week off, then you come back in week three, and you're playing against Murray State. And you're trying to figure out, okay, what do we have in Guadani in his senior year? Well, what I saw last week was a quarterback who was very much in command, and you saw by that beautiful throw to Bryce Mitchell, this guy's got a cannon for an arm. Just three plays to go 75 yards and a quick score. That last Colorado State drive that ended with the short field goal took about 25 minutes of real time. Toledo's <laughs> touchdown drive, three minutes of real time. <laughs> it's quick work. We call it slight work. For Toledo, but now you got to answer if you're Colorado State.
You've been looking to open things up, handing it off in heavy doses to Kinsey, who's now taken it 13 times, coming off a 20-carry performance last week. But this is a situation where Toledo's defense, they want to be in third and five with Patrick O'Brien. Who's been his main target? Number nine, Warren Jackson. I've got to find where number nine is if I'm Toledo defensively because that's been the go-to guy He's at the bottom of the screen. 14 of O'Brien's 18 passes have gone to Jackson. He's got all sorts of time, throws the crossing route, and it's incomplete. Great coverage there from Jordan Fisher, the tight end turn linebacker. They were all over that one. That was Jordan Fisher. I was just watching film. And Colorado State gets in those tight bunches, those tight formations. They like to run those underneath crossing routes. Nice patience there by Jordan Fisher, waiting until the ball is thrown and knocking the ball from Dante Wright. So Ryan Stonehouse is on to punt here, averaging 48 yards a kick coming into this game, sixth best in college football. After last year, he finished second in FBS, only behind Braden Mann at Texas A&M, who was the Ray Guy Award winner for the nation's top punter. Well, Boomer and TJ are back with NFL Primetime tomorrow, 7.30 Eastern, only on ESPN+. Plus. They'll have all the highlights and breakdowns from the day's games with updates after Sunday night and Monday night games as well. SVP and Joe Tess will also be a part of the fun. To get ESPN+, Plus, download the app or go to ESPNplus.com. I can't wait to hear Boomer's nickname for Daniel Jones, right? Like, what's the Daniel Jones nickname? What's it going to be? Like, Mr. Jones, Daniel, what? I got to gotta get something. You got to work Duke in there somehow. Right? <laughs> right, exactly. Here's a design run for Guadani, who's got a first shot and more. Racing toward midfield, and he's finally taken down by the sophomore corner, Rashad Ajah. Yeah, that's part of their game plan. They want to be smart with Guadani. But at some point, he's your best offensive weapon. It's your quarterback. And continue to use his legs and his arm. Flags from every quadrant of the field. Four of them stopped play as Toledo was looking to go up-tempo, get back to the line of scrimmage, and put some pressure on the Colorado State defense. Ball start. Number 58 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Kirk, watching this offense from the first quarter and a half to what they've done over the last couple of drives, you ever get on a boat and you're coming out of the harbor and you've got to go about five miles an hour in the no-wake zone before yeah. you can really turn things up and you get out onto the open water? That's what Toledo has been like. They went in the no-wake zone to start, real conservative, and now they've opened it up. Looking to go to the sideline again. That's through the hands of Desmond Phillips, their most experienced returner at wide receiver after losing three guys to the NFL last year. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Mike. That's For them, it's kind of slow. They, they started off slow. And you would kind of expect that. They're the, the road team, making a trip from Toledo all the way to Fort Collins, Colorado. And early on, it just seemed like they wanted to run to throw. And now, in this last couple drives, they've been throwing to run. And that's kind of a, a situation in which I think Jason Candle wanted to see what he's got going on offensive line-wise. They want to keep Guadani healthy. That's the number one thing. And once you start to feel like you get, you get comfortable, they're going to take their shots down the field. Anthony Hawkins, the senior corner for Colorado State, is the injured player. As Jason Candle brings his team west, Again, last year we showed you moments ago, Guadani with the concussion suffered at Fresno State. So they went Pacific time zone, now they're in the mountain time zone. <laughs> and they're a morning practice team. So their routine is to be up early, get done with practice, let the education in the classroom fill the rest of your day. So as they came out here, he said, yeah, we're not really going to change that much. We don't want to deviate too much from the plan, even though their schedule is off by two hours and they kick off tonight. It was after 10 p.m. Eastern time. So are you making excuses, Mike? Are you saying that they're winning? That they're, they're sleepwalking in the first quarter. They're in the winning. second quarter, they're finally awake, right? They're finally awake. And I think a lot of it, too, Mike, has to do with you're, you're trying to fill it out a little bit. Because I said it before, they've only played two games. Okay, you play week one at Kentucky. 
and then you have a, a bye week in week two. So you're trying to get into the rhythm of the season, and yet you had a nice little break in between weeks one and week two. Here's an interesting setup with three receivers split to the short side of the field on second down and 15. He fakes the give. He wants Maddox. And it's short for the redshirt freshman out of Lakewood, Ohio in the Cleveland suburbs. That's a good look by you because you saw it just the way I saw it. You get three receivers to the boundary side. They're there for a reason. They're there because they want to work the wide side of the field. That time they motioned just to get a nice little matchup and have more area to throw. That time, Budani just missed it. Just two for six, but one big hookup for Guadani on their last touchdown drive. Who's going to keep an eye on the quarterback here if he gets loose? He throws across the middle. Not enough for the first down to Bryce Mitchell again, who's from a Toledo family. Both parents went to school there. His dad, Ben, was on the 1990 MAC championship team, but it's fourth down. A little four-man rush by Colorado State. They're not going to go for it. They better put this football. But nice, nice hold there if you're Colorado State defensively. They play well. You know, outside of the drive prior to this one, Colorado State's defense has been playing well, down a couple men along that defensive line. But so far, they've been playing well, just seeing, keeping everything in front of them, playing top down. So 341 in the quarter, we go to the studio for another update. fans of the Mountain West tonight as well. Utah State 1-1, one one, San Diego State 3-0. Oh. Both teams picked to finish second in their respective divisions in the Mountain West. So Toledo goes on the defensive here. Their pick to finish right near the top of the MAC. Preseason pick to win the West. Second most votes to win the conference championship, trailing only the Ohio Bobcats. So with a first-time starter at quarterback here and a good amount of clock to work with, let's see just how aggressive the Rams might be trailing by one. So you on top of it, on the handoff, nowhere to go. Well, that's, that would tell you right there, but then we got two penalties, right? McElroy gets two carries back-to-back -back on first and second down, and here come the penalty flags. Already 13 called penalties in this game. It's a total, our statistician Joe Sullivan tells us, of 28 flags tonight. <laughs> we did go to a fitness festival today. So these officials are definitely getting their workouts in, throwing these flags. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the offense, number 71. Penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Third down. Well, that'll be doubly disappointing, not just because it's a penalty, because Jeff Taylor, the right guard, is their most experienced offensive lineman. Yeah, and here he is coming from the right side of the screen. Play's pretty much over, and he, I mean, that could be a situation of being reviewed also as well. That's a, Kirk, we've seen some really dumb penalties tonight. Yeah, that's that's it's the same thing earlier with Terrence Taylor, the defensive end for Toledo. He gets thrown out of the game for throwing a punch in there. Taylor, the play's pretty much over, and here he is, right there in front of the official too. I mean, the umpire standing right there. Just don't need it. Just don't need it. 
and it's it's a self-inflicted wound too. And you asked, were they going to be conservative or were they try to get some points to kind of end the half? And now you're on, you're on, that, that game plan. You're done with that. All right, you're just trying to survive the half and get into halftime, make some adjustments, and hopefully your defense can pick up. Which so far they've done well, but we know in the second half this defense for Colorado State has definitely uh, have not been up to the standard that they expect. Another flag. And a deep shot. Hooked off. Going deep into coverage. And Khalil Robinson, the junior, soars for the interception. There is a flag down at the three-yard line. Sixth interception of his career. Illegal formation. Too many men in the backfield. That penalty will be declined. First down, Toledo. So the Rockets have it here, 243 to go. And they wanted to take the shot here, but the ball is just underthrown. So with all these penalty flags, right. how do you ever, offense or defense, <laughs> from a player's perspective, settle in and get into a rhythm? Like you just want to make it to the half. And if I'm Coach Jason Kendall, I've got an opportunity to score here, so a little bit different because your offense has kind of come to a, come alive. That last play by O'Brien, I, I saw that as a punt. You know, think about it, that was really a punt. Third day teachers throwing in the air. You're like, you want to change and flip field position. I don't mind that interception, but just been sloppy on both sides. Go back off to the right side. And a modest pickup on first down with two and a half remaining before halftime. Colorado State opened by getting the ball, so Toledo's going to get it to start the third quarter. Score here certainly boosts their spirits. Guadani on play action. All sorts of time, lasers it right to the sticks. We'll see where they mark it on the catch for Mitchell. Looks to be a yard short, but they're right back on the ball. Head to Kobach. Now he stretched that ball forward, but the spot is short. So this is fourth down and a yard at most for Toledo. Yeah, didn't get it with that second effort. I knew they would hand the ball off. But again, another outstanding job by that defensive front for Colorado State. They've been under man, but for the most part, they've been playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage when it comes to the run game. Big decision time here for Toledo. But, you know, honestly, where this game's going, I go for it here. If I'm Coach Kando, I go for it, run the clock down a little bit, but I go for it. I don't put it here. I'm on the road. I can win this game. I feel confident in my offense. We really start to pick it up. Thirty-second timeout duration. When you think about it, outside of the first drive by Colorado State on offense, they haven't truly driven the field and scored a touchdown. It's been two field goals, and it's been a lot of that has been marred by what penalties and mistakes by Toledo's defense. So I look at a situation here, fourth and one. I go for it. I don't, I, don't, I don't kick it. I go for it. Why not? Feel confident in your offensive line. You've been running the football all game long. Fourth and one on their side of the ball, on their side of the field. I definitely I would have thought about going for it if I'm Coach Candle, but he brings out the punt team. And let's say they did go for it, get that first down and get right back to the line. That's an opportunity to throw it toward the end zone. But Colorado State's got one timeout left, so there are... I take my chances running the two-minute drill with a quarterback making his first start. That's Dante Wright not in the game. That's the second punt that we've seen. They've taken Dante Wright, the true freshman, off of the punt return team. 
Titans. He let a couple roll that added about 30 yards of extra punt yardage for Bailey Flynn. So the catch pins them at the six. 52 seconds and a long way to go. From the six out to the 14 yard line for Jalen Thomas, the freshman from Colorado Springs. It's been a heavy dose of Kinsey out of the backfield tonight. He leads the team 13 carries, 85 yards. And that goes to Jackson for his seventh catch of the day. Remember, Colorado State still has one timeout. If I'm Toledo, watch the middle of the field. Maybe trying to go for one more big play with that one timeout left to try to get in the field goal range. Last deep ball O'Brien tried was intercepted over the middle of the field. So it's been very conservative here. They're down to 25 seconds. Yeah, 25 seconds left. Patrick O'Brien, you got to take a shot somewhere around the middle of the field. Utilize that timeout and try to kick a field goal. But right now, that five, six sharp passes are, aren't going to get you points. There's just not enough time to attack with this approach. <laughs> it's not. Remember, he's in his first start on the FBS level. So this is what you get. They lost time as they waited there. Dangerous throw toward the sideline. And if they're not going to take a shot here, I don't understand why they don't just kneel it. Uh, look, 12 seconds left, right? So now you look at what you got. I think Toledo, we got an injured Toledo player down. And they're already down one defensive end. Terrence Taylor was ejected earlier in this quarter. That's Jamal Hines, a star on their defensive line in his sophomore season out of Cincinnati. Somebody they have very high hopes for. Yeah, he's been seeing him a couple times all over the field today. But now you get to a situation now where you have to attack the middle of the field. 12 seconds left. You still have that one timeout left. You got to attack the middle of the field. You got to attack downfield at least if you want to get points. If you check it down here, you might as well just go into half. So Mike Bobo, head coach, also calls the plays. You got to dial up something to get you enough, I would say about 15, no, about 25 yards to at least give you a chance for a field goal. And it's not as though their kicking situation this year among three different kickers has really been a sure thing. Now into plus territory as Dante Wright makes the catch. And there is their timeout after the gain of 16. With five seconds left. And you've only got one opportunity here. And you got to throw to the end zone if you want to score. Yeah, one shot. They got one shot at the end zone. So you practice this all week. It's usually at the end of practice, okay? And but when you look at what Colorado State has offensively, you've got a 6'6 receiver in Warren Jackson, right? You've got a six foot two receiver in, in Nate Craig Myers. So you've got the height, you've got the length that you can throw it to the end zone. But always remember this, give your wide receivers an opportunity. Too many times we see quarterbacks just throw it and it sells out of the end zone or it's too far. Give your guys an opportunity to make the play. They've thrown his way 17 times. The FBS high this year is 21. Not even to the end of the first half. A final play in this first half and a heave from O'Brien. And we've got a catch at the two yard line by Nate Craig Myers, but he is short. And the clock reads triple zeros. He's in the nine or four, was gonna go get it. Right idea, needs a little more distance on that throw by O'Brien. But way to go up and get it, Nate Craig Myers.
This is a drama, but it's a play in two acts. Our intermission now. We go to the studio, Kevin Connors, Emmanuel Acho. Take it away, folks. College football primetime on ESPN is presented by GEICO. We welcome you back here to Fort Collins, Colorado at the half. And a long one it was between Toledo and CSU with the Rockets up by one. Mike Cousins, Kirk Morrison. We've got a one-point game, which is great, but the story of the first half was how many mistakes were made. Uh, it was a penalty fest, right? It's just no rhythm. It was one play, then you go back five yards, 15 yards, and you can't get into a rhythm offensively on both sides, whether you're Toledo or Colorado State. I know what was said at half. It was both coaches, Candle and Bobo, telling the guys, look, as bad as we played in terms of mistakes, miscues, and penalties, this game is still right there for ours to take. It's about what team commits the least amount of penalties, the least amount of mistakes, and you can walk away victorious tonight. You had more pass interference flags on Toledo's secondary than you could count at one point. So combined penalties, 14 of them between the two squads. Toledo's got to cut down on those, and they faced a scare at the end of the first half. A completed pass of almost 50 yards to Nate Craig Myers inside the five-yard line, but just short as CSU, which racked up 101 more yards of offense than Toledo did in the first half. Got the ball to start the game, and so Toledo will get it to start the second half up by one. The Rockets come in one and one. Interesting schedule to start the year. They face Kentucky in the opener. Lose that game. 38-24, have a bye week mixed in. They defeat Murray State 45-0. They're trying to figure things out before the start of conference play. And Colorado State looking for a win here at one and two. They also have a lot of questions, especially at quarterback Patrick O'Brien, making his first career start, replacing the injured Colin Hill. 50% completion rate in the first half. Mitch Guadani, the redshirt senior, gets back going here with Toledo. They started off conservative, a lot of runs, and then late in the second quarter is where the offense opened up. Yeah, but I think in the second half, I want to see Guadani just not do too much. Do not feel like you got to put everything on your back. Utilize your guys, but look, he's going to be a big part of the run game, I think, in the second half, keeping plays and drives alive. Well, he scrambled for a first-half touchdown, but they hand it off to Kobach for the 11th time as he goes over 40 yards for the evening. I think they're going to get a heavy dose of the run game. And they're going to take their shots down the field, but I think they're, today their plan is to run to throw. Guadani flings it down the sideline, and a two-handed grab made by Danzel McKinley Lewis. Had his season cut short with a dislocated elbow a year ago. Back to it, and the Rockets are on the move. You got it right there, what we call the honey hole. That's in between... The safety in the corner, the terrific pass by Guadani. Big space to the right side. There goes Kobach. Open field touchdown from 37 yards out. Kirk, that's the second time tonight that the Rockets have gone three plays, 75 yards, and found the end zone. It was RPR, run, pass, run, and a great job by the tight end, Reggie Gilliam, six foot one, 255, leading the way. Got an outstanding block, and Kobach, an outstanding downhill runner. He saw green grass and found pay dirt. Well, no flags on that drive, but also no resistance from the defense. Yeah, but I just want you to keep an eye on number 14, Reggie Gilliam. He's a tight end, but they line him up at the fullback. But watch as he leads the way for Kobach. He gets right up there in the middle and just delivers a terrific block. Maybe a little bit of a hole, but hey, he makes a nice little alley for Kobach. And that, that's, that's great, first of all, great blocking. But Kobach seeing it and going. Look, I expected Toledo offensively to throw the ball around the ballpark tonight. I really did. And so far, it's been their running game that's really geared up the pass. And to me, if that's the second half for Colorado State defensively, they've got a long second half ahead of them. 
because we know about the second half defense of Colorado State. They've been outscored pretty much every game in the second half. Last two touchdown drives for Toledo. How about impressive? Three plays, 75 yards, one lasting 32 seconds, and another lasting 38. Second half defense, a big question coming into this game for Colorado State. He gets a nice juice on the return to the 28 for Anthony Hawkins. Now next Saturday, we'll have number six, Ohio State and Nebraska, which had a close one tonight. They'll be in Lincoln. The Buckeyes have won the last four against the Cornhuskers. It kicks 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on ABC and ESPN app in our Saturday night football game presented by Wells Fargo. Three top 25 matchups today. Alabama a winner. Tua tied the school record with five touchdown passes, which he's now done for the third time in his career as they took care of Southern Miss. And LSU, how about this? They just continue to be impressive. 66 points. It's just a list of the records they're tearing off right now. Joe Burrow has the most passing yards through four games of any SEC quarterback in the last 20 years and the team overall the most points by an SEC team ever in the first four games. But I thought they were a run team. <laughs> That's what we thought right the old LSU of old you throw that out of the window. Joe Burrow a legitimate Heisman candidate. There's a breakaway run. The answer from CSU, Kinsey goes all the way. A 74-yard response by the Rams. I'll tell you what, Mike. Marvin Kinsey doesn't need much. And if you don't have a guy just for him, this is what happens. He gets in the open field, there's nobody on this field that can catch Marvin Kinsey. Nobody. They were a little worried about him from a week ago. A couple of fumbles, one was returned for a score, but words of praise for the senior running back. Phillips making a one point game. here are number one Tyson Anderson the safety for Toledo and also one on the umpire if you're the safety free safety you have to have enough space but have room move the official out of the way Tyson Anderson gets locked in there on one side of the official he should have been on the other side because that was the wrong angle that he took and him being the last line of defense Tyson Anderson just not enough time to recover and you're not going to catch Marvin Kinsey in the open field a lot of that has to do with the safety Anderson finding a way to get that official out of the way so he can go make a tackle. So Kenzie's ripped off some huge plays. He's got a 74 yard or better scoring play in three straight games. Here a 74 yard run, 75 yards on the second play of the game last week against Arkansas and a 77 yard touchdown catch and their lone win this year against Western Illinois. So we're still not even two minutes, two minutes into the third quarter, and we've already got two touchdown drives. It's been big plays on both sides. The last two touchdown drives for Toledo have lasted respectively 38 and 32 seconds, three plays each. See if the Rams can provide better resistance. Play clocks at zero. Delay game, number six on the offense. Correction, Toledo called timeout prior to the delay. Timeout, 30 second timeout. I always wonder about the logic of that. Right. You're giving up a timeout of which you only have three to sacrifice a five yard penalty. Do you think that there's a, a payoff there or you just give up the five yards? Wouldn't you rather have that timeout in the fourth quarter? Well, first of all, I look at my quarterback. Number six, that's a senior. 
the first thing you do is when you come out on the field, because remember, this was the first play after a kickoff. You got to be ready to go. You got to be ready to go. <laughs> You're looking at the, the play clock like we got to go, speed it up. So the first person I blame is the quarterback. But to your point, Mike, I don't know if I'll waste a timeout in that situation. Noah, right now I got a one-point game, and the way it's looking, it seems it's going to be a close game to the end. Tight end Rossi motions over to provide blocking for Kobach. He's off to the races again. Who's going to get a stop in the third quarter? He's gone for another touchdown. 75 yards. I've seen some poor angles taken by safeties. Watch number 10. He'll come in to your right side of your screen. Taiwan Francis, you got to make that tackle, son. You got to make that one. He misses that tackle, and it's off to the races. It's 88 and out the gate. Strike up the band. The run game in the second half so far is really taking. Is this what this game's going to be about, Mike? In the second half, it's, it's the run game. Poor angles. Bad Poor angles. Angle. Perhaps these teams are in need of some Pythagorean coaching. <laughs> ESPN College Football, brought to you by Lexus. Experience amazing. There's a lot to do in Fort Collins, including the Fort Collins Fitness Festival. We did outdoor cycling today. That's our on-site producer, Nikki Rochelle, in the middle there as well. Cycling star. <laughs> We're just doing it for the gram. Mike Cousins, Kirk Morrison. We should mention, we didn't get to check at the end of the day, though who was the leader because we did a one mile challenge at the end you get on a on a cycle bike you ride you did it in two minutes and nine seconds so before lunchtime you were the leader in the clubhouse mike i could have did it faster oh i could have did it faster oh, okay. but that was actually the second bike ride that we had for the day so <laughs> that's right it was right. after the first initial workout i still got a chance to have a great time at the fit festival here in fort collins such a beautiful city great day by the way i'll tell you what though we're at about 5,000 feet right now. The <laughs> elevation is real. That was, I was winded. Yeah, that, I, I think I rode for 220 something. I was decently. You're doing good. I was decently far behind you as expected. That chest was uh, burning but, though, huh? Oh. <laughs> That yeah. was brutal. I'll tell you this. And, and the Mountain West provides a good number of places to test your strength at elevation. Well, I, and I don't want to put this on the Toledo team, but me playing against Colorado State in my college career in the Mountain West, it's always a difficult start to a football game because the elevation, like you mentioned, is real. You gotta be ready to go. A lot of times, these mountain teams get off to hot starts. And that's been a second half of explosive plays and yet another to add on to a half that's had six plays, 222 yards and three touchdowns in all of two minutes. 26-yard run for Kinsey. Uh, terrific block by the fullback. You don't see him too often, but 46 right there in your front of your screen. Adam Prentice delivers a nice block, a nice seal. You don't even need much for Kinsey. He'll find the open lane. Always hard to bring down. First and 10, just a tick across midfield. Dante Wright is in motion. And they hand it off again to Kinsey. Haven't seen a lot of Dante Wright tonight, the freshman receiver. They've only thrown it his way three times. But certainly somebody you expected to hear more from offensively is a guy who, yards-wise, leads FBS freshmen. Well, he's a true freshman. And when you think about how Dante Wright got here to Colorado State, you know, a lot of people didn't know would he be a Ram. Very quiet kid, but... You tell him where to go, what to do, and he's electric once you get the ball in his hands. The only problem is you got to find a way to get it to him. Oh, yeah. the to throw downfield. They've got the catch. Cameron Butler, the junior tight end, makes the grab, and they stay on the move. Oh, nice toe drag swag. Cam elevates. Actually gets two in. He only needed one. In college, you only need one. In the NFL, you need two. Nice job. High point in that football, bringing it down. 
His mom back home in South Carolina is a state senator in the Palmetto State. We're right to the 20-yard line. It's Warren Jackson who makes the catch. This is about as in rhythm as we've seen Patrick O'Brien, the quarterback, tonight. You know, I didn't think it was going to be a big drop-off from Colin Hill because I felt like, and that was one of the things that I noted before the game, was that if I'm Patrick O'Brien, I don't have to win it by myself. I've got some playmakers. I've got Wright. I've got Jackson. I even got Nate Craig Myers making his Colorado State debut. It doesn't have to be all on my arm. Nice wrap-up tackle by Chris McDonald on the pass to E.J. Scott, the redshirt sophomore out of Georgia, which is not an uncommon sight on this roster to see players from Georgia or around the Southeast given Mike Bobo's track record. Well, if you can get a nonstop flight to the Denver airport, then Mike Bobo's going to recruit you at Colorado State. That's just that's what he told us yesterday in meeting with him. And that's why they've been able to kind of scan the entire United States for talent. Bobo, the head coach, former Georgia quarterback, offensive coordinator, spent a good chunk of his professional career with the Bulldogs. Kinsey's off to the right side and leaves the defense in his dust. Touchdown, Colorado State. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, Mike. No edge, no chance, but watch the patience and watch how Kenzie glides to the outside. I mean, he's going forward, but as he's going toward the line of scrimmage, he knew he had the edge. And that's just a special ability that Kenzie has. And you mentioned it last week, fumbled twice, but he was still the starting back for a reason. And it's those types of plays for Kenzie getting to the edge for another score. Relatively speaking, that drive lasted ages, almost three minutes for a touchdown drive. Rams got ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Now we'll take you from plan to play, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Probably not the plan for these guys to go off the way they did, but it's worked out well for both teams. Well, look, I thought the plan was going to be about the quarterbacks, right? It was going to be about Patrick O'Brien and also Mitchell Godani. But the play on the field has told me different. The play on the field has been these two running backs, Kobach, Kinsey Jr. It's like a heavyweight fight. It's like, you do something, and I'm going to one-up you. You do something, I'm going to do it again. So outstanding going back and forth, these two running backs still in the show tonight. Just video game numbers. Kinsey went for 20 carries, 180 yards last week against Arkansas. Now over 200 yards tonight. Kobach came into this game only 135 yards total, and he <laughs> surpassed that tonight. Kinsey's not done, too. I mean, the way that he's running, the way this offensive line is blocking, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he could put another, uh, another 100 up there. Toledo's got it, first and 10 at the 25. Guadani's on the run, and a pickup of about five there for the redshirt senior from Hudson, Ohio. That's Kent State territory, right in the heart of the MAC. Now five minutes into the third quarter, we've seen four touchdowns in fewer than those five elapsed minutes, two by each team. And the injured Ram is Ellison Hubbard, the junior from Loganville, Georgia. We know that's not good, Mike, for many reasons. But when you think of Colorado State defensively, that's probably why they're huddling up as a team over there on the sideline because they're already down one in McBride. Now Hubbard may be down, losing depth along that front, Colorado State. Here in Fort Collins, Colorado, with Kirk Morrison, Mike Cousins. Five minutes gone, third quarter. Toledo out of the MAC. Colorado State from the Mountain West. And a one-point game as Toledo has a second and seven from its own 28-yard line after an injury stoppage. The defensive tackle, Ellison Hubbard, came off the field but ran off. Hopefully, they'll see his return. 
as he's got to sit out at least one snap. They've been plenty successful running the ball here. Third down and four. You can see it go either way. Definitely go either way, Mike, but I'm just trying to figure out who's the go-to guy. Right now, if I'm Kudani, I need a, I need a, I need a conversion here on third down. Who's been my guy I can depend on to keep the chains moving? Now he takes off. A blocker in front, first down and then some across midfield as he slides at the 45-yard line. That was one of the biggest fears for the Rams defense was being able to contain him. He escapes for 22. Well, that's the question I asked to start the half. Is who is the guy that you can count on? And that guy is the quarterback, number six. Mitchell Guadani just putting the game in his hands on third down. He lost it down the sideline, incomplete. Good coverage there from Rashad Ajay, the sophomore in his second year as a starter. Guadani's now run for 56 yards as well. He's averaging 14 yards every time he takes off and runs. Oh, I love the way that he slides, though, right? You know, he slides down at the end. He's not trying to find contact. Here's a guy that's had his injuries so far in his college career. When he gets in the open field, it's get enough and get down on the ground. Tight end Rossi in motion. And they run it that way with Kobat. Could it be another long run for a touchdown? Indeed it is. The third quarter of explosive plays, and Kobach goes for 47 yards. I said it before, anything you could do, I could do better, but I want you to watch the left tackle, number 68, Mitchell Byrd. He seals the edge. There's no one out there. And if you're a defender for Colorado State, you have to have an edge. You have to set an edge. You can't. If you don't set the edge, that's what happens. The longest plays in football, Mike, Mike you know where they happen? Along the sideline. you got to have an edge set. Mitchell Berg, the sophomore, 6'6", 305, left tackle. Watch how he just grabs what he's... Looks like Damian Dickens just grabs him and just holds it, and just enough. Officials aren't going to call that at all. They're not going to call that. They are not going to make that call. Hands are inside. They just got enough and a piece, and that's all Kobach needed. Racing to the end zone. You're talking about plays of 20 yards or more. <laughs> just in the third quarter alone, Toledo's had three. CSU has had five, and it's once again an eight-point game. Kobach going off for a career high, 207 yards. For the sophomore running back from Holland, Ohio, he had 135 yards combined in the first two games. And a night to remember. It's just Kobach. It's first he catches his first receiving touchdown of his college career. But it's really been about his vision and getting into the open field. Wasn't much of a burner, but I haven't seen anybody catch him today, Mike. And then he just finds edges. And once he gets to the edges, it's 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 good night. It's see you later. He's done a great job, and you got to give credit to his offensive line, sealing the outside, and he's been finding the sideline for touchdowns. It's Jackson tumbling out at about the 33-yard line to set up second and short. The biggest question in my mind is how many passes are they going to throw on this drive? Do you just keep handing it off and going <laughs> punch for punch? with the running backs, Kinsey and Kobach, being the stars of the show tonight. Yeah, it's a little bit different, right? Because I really thought that it was about throwing the ball tonight, and it's not. It's, it's the run game. Two explosive running backs having career nights. 
that's what I'm going to I'm going to lean on that if I'm Patrick O'Brien in my first start too. Early motion along the line, the left tackle TJ Stormett move. That play was just all out of whack, right? The guys going moving on? around. Play called, guys are on the wrong spot moving around, and you get a false start. start. Number 72 in the offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. The left tackle out of North Carolina, who's at his third school, Old Dominion, Fullerton College, and now here at CSU. ODU putting a scare into the Virginia Cavaliers, the game that led into this one tonight. UVA comes away the winner. That's twice this year the Monarchs have gone toe to toe with FBS teams, including Virginia Tech as well, a couple weeks ago. Second and six. With a shoulder fake, the throw to follow, and the catch. Cameron Butler. Nice acrobatics for his second grab, both of them along the sidelines. Yeah, along the sidelines, but he has to go up and go grab. And that's kind of been the theme for Butler, right? He goes up and grabs him because he's going to, like, on the sideline, but he's out jumping the defender. Against a four-man front, defense proves to be effective as they stifle Kinsey's rush. You know, I've been really surprised Colorado State offensively, Mike. We haven't called Dante Wrightsley, you know, the true freshman. We talked about him a little bit earlier, but we haven't really seen the big play from him, whether it's the end around, it's the screen passes. He's been having a quiet night. He's one of their stalwarts in the beginning of the season. Just two catches for him. 19 of the 31 passes have gone Warren Jackson's way. For right, he came in leading all FBS freshmen in receiving yards and touchdowns. 280 yards through the air, three touchdowns. They've handed it off to him a good number of times. He scored two times on the ground. Here's a guy from outside Pensacola, Florida, who originally committed to play at Tulane. They switched offensive coordinators and said, okay, we'll keep you, but you gotta play defense now. So Colorado State swoops in. And again, you mentioned direct flights. You had a hub airport here in Denver. Well, fortunately for CSU, Frontier Airlines launched a flight from Pensacola to Denver. All of a sudden, mom and dad are a lot happier. But he's a quiet guy, like you said. And when he came on his visit, hardly said a word. And they say he still rarely says much. And Mike Bobo said, you know what? I want to hear from him. Mom and dad said he wants <laughs> right. to come here, but he's got to tell it to me also. Well, I'll tell you this. He may be quiet, but his play has been loud early in the season. Just haven't seen the night, which was 14 yards per run coming into that play. And we've seen them take shots over the course of this game. They've got the eight-point lead here. You've got 20 minutes of football, clock time to go. But it's a CSU defense through three games that has proved very susceptible, including in this game, to giving up huge plays. And their poor tackling really comes up in the third and fourth quarter. That's where the CSU defensively have got to focus in, especially on that tackle. Two more yards to get for the first down as Seymour gets to the logo. Seymour is stopped by Tron Folsom, and it's a fourth down. Well, Seymour is a different back, right? When we watch Kobach. He's got enough speed to get to that outside and turn it up for a big game. And we've seen a couple touchdowns that way. Seymour is a north and south kind of guy. So if you get his feet stopped right there near the line of scrimmage, he doesn't have the speed to get to the outside. And that's great pursuit by the Colorado State defense on third down. After a moment of indecision, the Rockets bring on Bailey Flint. 
This punt lands inside the five. A long field to go for CSU. So bad tackling came into the national spotlight last week for the Rams on this play. Well, is this play, you're in the fourth quarter, you're trying to stay within a couple scores of Arkansas, but it's just bad tackling. One guy misses, two guy misses. I don't see the effort of trying to get him down. Everybody's trying to put a shoulder in. You gotta wrap up, wrap up. Five missed tackles and tight ends off to the races, really sealing the game for Arkansas last week. But that's what this second half has to be about for Colorado State defensively. It's not only playing your assignments, but making sound tackles and wrapping up. And just in the third quarter, Toledo has had plays of 22, 29, 37, and 75 yards. So pin back deep, it's Kinsey again. It was over 200 yards on the ground tonight after going for 180 and a touchdown against Arkansas. Their quarterback, Patrick O'Brien, the transfer from Nebraska, 19 for 33, 224 yards. Getting the start in the place of the injured Colin Hill, who tore his ACL last week. Scheduled for surgery this coming Friday, the third ACL tear of his career. Devastating blow for this team. They'll hope O'Brien can help lead the way for them. A squad looking to improve on what they did a year ago when they went three and nine. Yeah, and look, a lot of people knew this team was going to be better, right? Because Colin Hill was coming back. Now, what does the injury do to this team? Really, what's the identity now? And so far, with Colin Hill being down, Patrick O'Brien steps in. This is still a, this is now a run football team led by Marvin Kinsey. If they can ride him, they can have a lot of success this season. Pressure coming. O'Brien back foots this throw and complete. And you imagine, too, as the year goes along, this is the first start for O'Brien. He played in just four games two seasons ago at Nebraska. A philosophical change led to his transfer that as he becomes more comfortable as the starter, the offense and the playbook will expand for him. Yeah, it'll expand, but you know, think about going into Mountain West play, it's only gonna get tougher. A lot of these opponents they got coming up next week, Utah State. Difficult opponents coming up, Colorado State. The 21st target of the night for Warren Jackson, which ties the season high in FBS among those targeted 21 times this year, Rondale Moore at Purdue. Well, I'll tell you this, Warren Jackson's been in the weight room <laughs> because that's a bench press right there. That's, that's a great push with that stiff arm by Warren Jackson. Look, to be six foot six, 219 pounds, such an agile wide receiver, a big threat, not just in the red zone, but he's been all over the field tonight pretty much almost wide open. Check down throw, it's in the plus territory. Dante Wright. Just his third catch of the game. And that may not go down as a big play in the stat sheet or in the books, but that was a terrific job by Patrick O'Brien. He wanted the shot down the field. But he said, you know what? No, I'll take the check down. Turnbull's a basically a two, three yard throw, and then he gets a first down because he's able to go through his progressions and find the check down. It's a good job by the quarterback. Get himself an easy 15 yards and into Toledo territory. Three receivers running rugs, and that's incomplete at the 10 yard line as he wanted EJ Scott. Probably want that one back. Patrick O'Brien wants that back. During preseason camp, they have what they call hot seat moments, where players voluntarily can get up to talk. And O'Brien chose the opportunity this year to get up 
and express his gratitude for the way this team had accepted him for a guy who didn't sign out of high school to play at CSU. That was a moment that Mike Bobo, his head coach, viewed as somewhat of a turning point for him from a leadership perspective to get up and make his presence known because it's said so often, but it is true that you want to command the respect of your teammates when you play quarterback. Well, you command your respect by the way you practice, the way you prepare, and when your number is called to go in and execute. And I think he had a lot of guys on board last week in the Arkansas game coming in. And then so far today, leading his team well, still behind eight. He's thrown for 273 yards. The big starter has been Marvin Kinsey, who's averaged a first down every time they've handed it off, almost 11 yards a carry. Fourth down. Kenzie's been the go-to guy here on fourth down. I go back to my bread and butter, number five, but I also use my fullback, 46, Adam Prentice. Watch 46, see if he leads the way for Marvin Kenzie. Now Jalen Thomas is in the backfield for the Rams. Oh. <laughs> Flags from every corner. Who does fall start on the offense? It's just <laughs> who are they going to find as the guilty party? Fall start. Number 64 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Scott Brooks, the first year starter at center. But the center didn't move the ball, right? Or did he? Because the right side of the offensive line took off and it was a flinch. And I said it before, new cadence. Colin Hill's been the guy, the quarterback. You get used to a cadence, and all of a sudden now it's different with Patrick O'Brien. They were going for it on fourth and one. A decision to make on fourth and six as we go to the fourth. After a back and forth third, video game numbers, explosive plays, points abound. 35, 27, 15 to play. Time on ESPN is presented by Geico. We go to the fourth quarter. Colorado State with the ball down by eight. They had a fourth and one, a false start. Now fourth and six at the Toledo 41, and the offense stays on the field. O'Brien has five options to throw it, and the complete pass to Nate Craig Myers who brings a crowd of defenders to the 25-yard line. The transfer from Auburn making his Colorado State debut the biggest catch of the night. I think everybody at Camden Stadium thought that ball was going to Warren Jackson, right? But no, he goes to Craig Myers making his Colorado State debut that we've been talking about tonight. The Auburn transfer making a big conversion on fourth down. He played in 28 games for the Tigers. Had to sit the first three games this year after leaving the team three games into the 2018 season. O'Brien to the sideline. There is a flag down. Twelfth catch for Jackson. Illegal formation on the offense, more than four in the backfield. Five yard penalty, replay first down. So that backs the Rams up, but gives them another opportunity to throw it deep for Nate Craig Myers. Only ranked behind Nikhil Harry now with the Patriots in that 2016 class in the ESPN 300. Three seasons with Auburn, of course, just three games into 2018. Signed late and then came here in the summer and had to sit out the first three games. 
but his humility is what stands out most to this coaching staff alongside his talent. Yeah, the way that he's prepared these first three weeks of the season, couldn't wait for his opportunity today. There goes O'Brien on the move. And he's past the sticks, it looks like, for a first down. Gain of 15 from the redshirt junior quarterback. Oh, that's a confidence builder now. It opens up the playbook. I saw Warren Jackson limp off the field. I believe he's back on. But if he's off the field, watch for Craig Myers in the slot. And off Kinsey. Escapes the first wave. And almost penetrates the second. At this point, you can just pull the string in my back and let me <laughs> say there's a flag on the field. <laughs> Illegal formation on the offense, more than four in the backfield, five-yard penalty, replay first down. We've seen this throughout the game, and that's, you know, honestly, that's on the players. You have to know who's on the line and who's off. You report to the referee if you're the wide receiver. You say, hey, look at the official. Hey, I'm on, he's off. We've seen that penalty countless times for Colorado State tonight. The string. Yeah. I'll yep. say it. Holding right tackle Wesley. <laughs> Holding number 69 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the, from the previous spot. Replay first down. Colorado State has 27 points. Toledo has 35, and the officials have had 37 flags hit the ground in this game. You can't fault them. If there's a penalty, they've right. got to call it. It just has not been the most aesthetically pleasing game. A sloppy, sloppy game on both sides. 20 penalties, 172 combined yards. First and 25 for CSU. That run by O'Brien set them up nicely. And they get just a couple back from Kinsey. Don't let the penalties distract from what has been a great night rushing, though. Right. Brian Kobach, 207 yards for Toledo. Kinsey for CSU, 217. First game this year in college football with two 200-yard rushers. No, that's a big night for both those backs. But watching Jackson go back into the game, Warren Jackson, number nine. I take a shot at the end zone, number nine, at the bottom of the screen. Try to streak him up the field for a touchdown. They've already thrown his way 24 times tonight. O'Brien buying some time on the rollout. And he gets pushed out of bounds at the boundary by Deswan Johnson. And in addition to having the only game this year with two 200-yard rushers, Kinsey and Kobach are the sixth and seventh players this year to go over 200 yards. Earlier today, Wisconsin's Jonathan Taylor did that in their dominant win over Michigan, 35-14. to 14. A statement game for them. <laughs> it's them right at the top of the Big Ten with Ohio State. The freshman right. And he's back essentially to the original line of scrimmage. Fourth down. So they bring on the field goal team here. Caden Camper. Kicked against Arkansas, but didn't know last week that he'd be making the trip until Friday. So he got the call real late, said, hey, you're on the trip walk-on. <laughs> Braxton Davis, Max Paduska had not gotten the job done to Mike Bobo's liking. 
So the Pueblo, Colorado native, no good on that one. Still an eight point game. LA Washington State with Linda and Stan. They'll have Kirk Kerbstreet's biggest takeaways from the top 20 matchups. Plus, a look back at former Cougar Gardner Minshew's amazing week, presumably his jorts as well. And can the Cubs get back in the wild card chase with a week left in the season? Can they save Joe Madden's job? Sports Center after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, Pac 12 after dark. We see what you've got. We raise you Mac and Mountain West after dark. Happy Saturday night. Happy Sunday morning, wherever you might be. We got ten and a half minutes to go. Colorado State coming off a missed field goal, still down by eight as they look to get to two and two. Rodani across the 25. And he slides to safety out of bounds. It's a big drive here, Colorado State defensively. Because I think if you go up another score, another touchdown, already you've seen the walls in the kicking game for Colorado State today. But now you're going to put a lot on the shoulders of Patrick O'Brien to have to come back from a two-score deficit. If you get any type of score here, if you're Toledo. Design roll out for Donnie, not the option to throw. He goes headlong and gets the first down. This is why this team was the preseason pick to win the West in the MAC. And in terms of championship votes, only trailing Frank Solich's Ohio Bobcats, so dangerous on offense with Guadani as a dual threat. John Jancic, the defensive coordinator, who's coached all around college football. But his time at Tennessee, he said, he reminds me of Will Greer when he was at Florida and then eventually at West, uh, West Virginia as well of his ability to take off and run and really stretch a play. That's Devin Maddox across midfield. Now I get a little end around going. Now they're deep into the playbook, finding different ways to, go, to run the ball. It's been Godani. We saw Kovac earlier. And now you throw a little Maddox in. And this defense for Colorado State starts to look around and they start to look tired. And this is where the tackling bowls come in for Colorado State. And they're now nearing their averages. This was low scoring first quarter. But the Rams have averaged given up 40 points and 403 yards a game. Hit as he throws. No whistle. And the Rams have it. You'd imagine a replay review might be imminent here. Fumble recovered by the defense. Marshawn Cameron falls on top of it as Guadani, for once tonight, could not elude the defense. Livingston Pagofi get into the quarterback. Yeah, that time it was a straight shot. It was the fake to Kobeck. And Guadani just doesn't see him. But was the arm going forward before the ball is released? This is going to be an interesting replay, Mike. Very interesting. Very interesting. I know the replay booth. You got to take another look at this one. I'm just trying to look at a couple of reviews up here. There's a fumble recovered by the defense. That ruling is under review. So now we know that the, the call on the field was a fumble because there was no we didn't hear any whistle recovered by the defense and so now you just want to look at the motion of the quarterback's arm is the ball still intact or is the ball out before he's able to follow through and I don't see a I don't see anything to overturn it. I think that they stay with the call of the field. I don't see the follow through of the quarterback, a definitive look. That's a tough one. That's just tough. 
because I'm looking at different angles. And you see that one back angle we just saw looks like his arms going all the way through, but it's not all the way a follow through. My question is, if it's not a pass attempt, how is the ball moving forward like that? You need indisputable video evidence to overturn right. the call on the field, which ended up with Colorado State possession. Huge for them if they get it. They're down 35-27. But I think it should be a forward pass and an incomplete pass. <laughs> wow. I'm trying to agree with you, partner. I really am. I really am, but it seems like is that arm going all the way through? But I think the great point that you make is that the football did go forward. It wasn't like it went backwards. And you look at the rule book. It's a pass if the ball comes loose at any point after the hand starts forward. I think that's what you had there because that was right. what propelled the ball forward. And I agree with that one. And by the letter of the law, that's that's an incomplete pass. But I think it's hard because you're a defensive player and you get the arm before it's actually able to finish and follow through with the open hand. But just the start of the motion of a throw, that's an incomplete pass. By the letter of the law, and we saw a couple reviews right there, that should be an incomplete pass. I like when you agree with me, Kirk. Yeah, I, you, 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 <laughs> I got to take my emotions out of it as a former defensive player and say that was great effort by the defense. Like just getting there, making a play, but yet the letter of the law is coming forward. And when the review takes this long, <laughs> we, we kind of understand what's going on. It should have been easy. It should be bang, bang, say, hey, call the field, stand, let's move on. But when you've taken this long to review, we talk about what, Mike? Going back. When the pen meets the pen. <laughs> there it is. There it is. What's the down distance <laughs> and time to play? This should be an incomplete pass. It was great effort to get there by Pagofi, the junior defensive tackle. Yep. This is the greatest use of illustration we've had tonight. right here. When that pen and paper come out, <laughs> <laughs> that means that, uh, yeah, this call may be overturned and going back to Toledo. After further review, the quarterback's hand was going forward with the ball. It is an incomplete pass, second down. So things continue to stay interesting in midnight mountain action, but the arm coming forward signifies the start of the pass and an incomplete one. Yeah, it's coming forward right there. That's that last little bit at the end. He just got it at the beginning of the arm going forward. Tough break for Colorado State defensively, an outstanding play. After the long wait, Gordani, the redshirt senior quarterback, and the Rockets are back to work. Kovac with a burst around the right side, first down as he lowers the shoulder at the 35. And that's been Kovac's play. It's a run to the outside, the sweep. I mean, it's literally, Kovac gets the ball, and he just looks for the sideline. And once he gets to the sideline, he turns it up. Some outstanding blocking by his wide receivers. That's probably been the best that they've really done. The impact that they've had in this game is really wide receivers been there blocking on the edges. And the tight end, Reggie Gilliam as well, who's in motion here, has proved to be a big blocker on a couple touchdown runs as well. Rodani's on the move, first down and more. And the slide inside the 20-yard line. We showed you earlier in the game, he was diagnosed with a concussion last week at, or last year at Fresno State. Also in the opener against Kentucky this year. And you think that's got to impact the way he plays. His slides have been very early. Yeah, he, he gets what he the defense gives him. And he's not afraid now to just get down. You're more valuable to your team getting down and going to the next down 
Don't try to be greedy. He's not been greedy tonight. He's over 100 yards rushing, 107 for him, 220 for Kobach. And now to throw. Incomplete. Let's play a counterfactual game here, right? We started the show by saying the quarterbacks are of utmost importance tonight. Correct. And they've been very important. But if I were to tell you that Mitch Guadani was going to be 5 for 13 for 106 yards in the fourth quarter, would you say Toledo was winning? Yeah, you probably got me on that one, Mike. I, I, I would have said that they are down in this game. But on second thought, I would say they must be running the ball really, really well. And against a Colorado State defense that's been poor tackling throughout the year. Seymour gets split out, design run Guadani, but he's swallowed up along the line. Great early tackle to help him, or to keep him from getting more yardage. It's Daquan Jackson, the sophomore from Jacksonville, who tackles him. And here you are on third down now, right? You've got, you feel like you got points in the bag if you're Toledo. And I said it before, you get three here, it's two possession game. You're gonna force Colorado State to have to drive and get two scores. I see them keeping the ball on the ground here and kicking a field goal. Instead, it's to the air for Guadani and the Rockets. He launches end zone and throws too far, trying to get Maddox. So fourth down and an opportunity to make the lead 11. Don't agree with the play call there. You've got an opportunity to get a closer field goal, keep the clock moving. You kick the field goal, you feel pretty good about a two-possession lead. Strategically speaking, it's puzzling. And also, given the success they've had on the ground, <laughs> the Rockets have racked up 382 rushing yards. They want to wind down the clock as much as possible. 34-yard try here from the freshman Evan Davis, and he's got it. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Pre-game AgFest here at Colorado State features some of the state's agricultural growers and producers and some of the state's premier outdoor barbecue, fall off the bone good kind of stuff. The Ag Day, I guess Ag Night now, yeah. tradition started back in 1981 from the school's College of Agricultural Sciences. And so the team's wearing these orange uniforms. Throwback today to honor Ag Day in the school's history. Formerly the Aggies, hence the A, now the Rams. We've got a 38-27 lead for Toledo as local time has hit the day barrier. Midnight Mountain Maction here in Fort Collins. With Kirk Morrison, Mike Cousins, glad to have you with us. Some exciting football, both in the Pac-12 and here as the Mountain West meets the MAC. There is work to be done for CSU, and they'll start just shy of the 30-yard line. But one of the differentiating factors this year has been the ability to close games for CSU. Yeah, that's been the hard part for them. And defensively, they've done great first halves. And it's been the third and fourth quarters. Not only have they been outscored, but they just haven't executed defensively. And offensively, you're still trying to play catch up. And here you are now, down two scores. And you got to put the ball in the air with the quarterback making his first career start. O'Brien 24 for 40 tonight. And there's not any other place you'd expect it to go except for Warren Jackson who's thrown to for the 25th time. That's an FBS high this year, and he makes his 12th catch. Now he's down. Took a big hit after catching that pass. Six ten to play fourth quarter. 
The injured player is receiver Warren Jackson. After an injury stoppage, still 6-10 to go fourth quarter. Colorado State on its own turf, down by 11 against Toledo. Warren Jackson was the injured player. He's been the top target receiving for either team so far tonight. Made his 12th catch of the evening, but was down for quite some time on his back and comes off the field. Mike Bobo, the head coach for CSU, came onto the field during the stoppage. And that ball is ruled down. Bobo came onto the field and was putting his fist to his head, saying, hey, this needs to be reviewed for targeting. Yeah, you want to see, was he defenseless? He is. He's in the act yeah. of making a catch. He's a defenseless player, hasn't had time to protect himself there. The replay booth does have the ability to create a targeting foul here. And it's a very close call because you have to determine where the contact was made. The rule would say it's targeting. The rule does say if there is forcible contact to the head or neck area. And so the question will be, was the contact initiated on the shoulder pad or on the helmet there against Jackson? Yeah, and that's kind of what the replay is showing that obviously it's a dangerous play. And from the looks that I saw was that the contact was made in that shoulder neck area, but also too the receiver is going down. So you talk about a six foot six wide receiver. I could be aiming high. And let's remember how, how tall this receiver is. He's six foot six and you're trying to go up and he's actually going down. And that's to me looks to be targeting. Probably the officials missed that one. Dante Wright down to the 45 yard line. Rams need a quick score here and then a defensive stand if they want to make a comeback in this game. It's Kinsey out to the races again. Colorado stayed into the red zone. Kinsey only disappointed that his run didn't finish there. Yeah, Tyson Anderson saved a touchdown. He saved the day for Toledo. Because Kinsey again with that electric speed and just a little push by Tyson Anderson gets Kinsey out of bounds. He's up to 246 yards in this game. Now they're down 11, but still handing him the ball. I mean, it's not out of the question. If they get the ball back quickly, we might see a 300-yard rusher tonight. Yeah, we could see that. But then we also can see right now who's the go-to guy. Jackson out of the game, okay? He's been the go-to target, 12 catches tonight. So this is the opportunity for Nate Craig Myers, the transfer. Does he now become that guy, especially down here, 15-yard line in the red zone? Watch number four. O'Brien moves outside the pocket, does find Craig Myers. In his Colorado State debut, had to sit the first three games, and one of the top receivers coming out of high school three years ago has been quite impactful tonight. Yeah, he's been making catches, big plays. And remember, with Jackson out, he becomes the go-to guy. He's the big play threat. He's the guy with the big catch radius. And if there's somebody I trust, I'm going to trust the Auburn transfer, Nate Craig Myers. Bit of a struggle on the attempt at a handoff. O'Brien stretched, and he's inches shy of the goal line inside four and three-quarters minutes. They're back to the line to try and get it right across the goal line. On the sneak, he extends it. Touchdown, Colorado State. All he needed to do was break the plane of the goal line, and he did just that. He tried to extend it on the first play, on the first, right before this one, before a touchdown. They hurry back to the line of scrimmage. They get the touchdown, and now go for two. So now, 
Another situation here, ball, three yard line. Kinsey's been a big play for you, big play guy. But I like the ball right here. Where is it at? Left hash. So, you know, obviously they're going to work the wide side of the field. I will put my quarterback on the on the move a little bit, give him a run pass option, maybe a little bit of a sprint out. And if anything, Nate Craig Myers, a receiver at the top in motion, coming underneath. Trying to make it a three-point game. And they do. Made it look real easy with Dante Wright, the freshman, breaking away from the pack. It's pretty simple. All you do is put your quarterback on the run, and you convert the two-point conversion. Colorado State still with life. My name is Bailey Flynn, and I just wanted to say thank you to all my teachers from Hoppers Crossing Secondary College and Leighton Christian Academy for all that you've done for me in getting me excited about learning and encouraging me to always do my best. With a special shout out to Doyle Holt. Thank you. Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual celebration led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that honors great teachers across the country. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard or search the hashtag Extra Yard Week. Bailey Flint doing a lot of work outside the classroom as well. He studied theater in Russia this past June. The native of Melbourne, Australia went to Russia and he also appeared in the school production of All Quiet on the Western Front last year. So not only is he a great punter, he came into this game averaging 44 yards a kick, but he's got some theatrical chops as well. They always say punters are great actors, right? You know? <laughs> you got to draw a flag. Yeah. <laughs> you got to draw a flag at some point. <laughs> Toledo has racked up 488 yards. Colorado State, 621. Oof. Yet it's the Rams who trail by three. 433 to go here on their home turf. Trying to get to two and two before the start of Mountain West play. Toledo with the early bye week, one and one. They want to figure themselves out. Certainly have had a lot of opportunity to do that tonight, both positive and negative. And defense, which has proved difficult in fourth quarters this year for CSU, has got to be locked down here. Well, Colorado State, three timeouts, plenty of time. Toledo, they, they need a drive. You started off with Kobach, right? And now you're going to force this Colorado State defense to do what? Protect the edges. You've seen that's where the big plays have come from for Toledo offensively. And then also what? With Donnie's legs. Probably more on third down, but those are the two guys I'm keeping my eye on. Keeping the running back from getting to the edges and keeping a spy on Guadani as he becomes a big time runner. Guadani to the edge with Rossi, the tight end, out in front. And for as much emphasis as they, ha as they had on spying him, Jamal Hicks trailed him there. They've not been able to stop him very effectively when he's on the move. Yeah, but a lot of people may say that, you know, you need your quarterback to stay in bounds. But remember, this is, this is Mitchell Guadani, a little bit different. He's going to keep himself safe. So for him, going out of bounds is a plus. Anybody else probably would try to get that extra yard and stay in bounds. But protecting Guadani, and the clock is still rolling. Fresh set of downs, but it's the same same scenario. Kobach, Guadani, Kobach, Guadani. Gain of two off to the right side. And a timeout taken by Colorado State. They're first. Timeout. This is their first time out of the half. 30 second time out. Week three, Monday night football, and the Bears are at FedEx Field to take on the Redskins. Eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. 
That's a weak Washington defense right now, which is good timing for the Bears. They've got a very strong defense, but the offense has left something to be desired. <laughs> we saw it last year with the Bears. The outstanding season. They win the division, and all of a sudden, we want to see Mitch Trubisky. Does he take the next step? So far, questions about the Chicago Bears quarterback. A tackle and a suplex to finish that play. Manny Jones said no more. Second Colorado State timeout. You got to watch it there. You send that tape to Vince McMahon. Yeah, I did see last week. DeAndre Hopkins, wide receiver for the Houston Texans. Body slammed a guy like that. He got a 15-yard penalty for unnecessary roughness. You got to make sure you watch it. That a little bit extra. But here's a here here's third and six. I won't call it the game for Colorado State just yet, but you need to stop here. And so for me, it's it's Guadani. Whatever this play is, is going to involve their quarterback. Number six. Toledo cool. looking for a big finish before a big game next week into the Glass Bowl on ESPN Plus as they welcome in BYU. They hosted Miami last year in another big game at home. They throw here on third down, and it's fourth down. Half a yard shy. Drossy, the tight end, makes the catch, coming off a six-catch game last week. And that's a bad job by Rossi. Yeah, and that's what Guadani's saying right there. He's looking and shrugging his shoulder, saying, come on, man. Get to the sticks and then make your out cut. But this is the play of the game here. Remember, one timeout left. The ruling on the field is that the runner was short of the first down marker. The previous play is under further review. And the official who spotted that play right there came out with his fist in the air, signaling right. fourth down immediately. So he knew he looked like he came up about a half yard short. I didn't like the, I didn't like the route by Rossi. Tight end 89, I think he knows better. You got to get to the sticks, then turn out. See, he's a full, he, yeah, he's about a half yard short. I, I see that's a catch. I see full possession, but he's about a half yard short. I mean, he pushes that route up just another half a yard. I see both hands underneath that football, I believe. But if he pushes that route up just another, another yard, that's a first down for Toledo. So let's assume it's a fourth down and half a yard to go here. Toledo, if they go for it, get the first down, can essentially end the game because Colorado State is down to one timeout. What do you do? I'm putting. <laughs> I'm putting the football. Why? Why run it? I would punt it and force Patrick O'Brien in his first start to go down and drive the field. And, get, and remember, we, they've, the kicking woes for Colorado State. It's not like, you know, they've got this amazing kicker. They've got a walk-on who didn't play last week. Well, played last week, but wasn't the kicker to start the season. You know what I mean? They've got so, three kickers, none of whom they <laughs> trust exceptionally at a high level. So let's just put all the cards out, right? Let's just, what do you got? And if I'm Jason Kent, I'm going over all the scenarios in my head. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, fourth and short. Let's go for it. But, hey, I feel like I got a strong defense. I know they've given up a ton of yards today. You've also got 397 rushing yards <laughs> on the day, too. But rushing is probably going to help you. The ruling of a catch stands, and the ruling of short of the line to gain is confirmed. Fourth down. They bring the offense back out here. I like this call. You go for it. You basically end the game here. Well, remember, they do have one timeout left. And they may just run the clock and force Colorado State to call the timeout, too. Or they just try to draw you off sides. 
They hand it off. They get the first down. An explosive play. A cut back inside the 40, down to the 20-yard line. The exclamation point they needed comes from Shakif Seymour, a run of 35 when they just needed one. And that's the call. That's a confident coach making a call. Me, I wouldn't have done it. But Coach Candle believing in his offensive line, his wide receivers, to be on the road and say, let's try to end this thing now. Terrific job by the offensive line and Seymour turning it upfield. Illegal block below the waist. Number 14 on the defense. The penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Our 21st penalty of the night. So although not a scoring play, yet another huge play given up by this Rams defense. And that narrative will continue after this week. Fourth quarters, second halves have been their downfall. Maybe a yard for Seymour. Just about running the clock now. One timeout left for Colorado State. Is there enough time left that you can hold to a field goal and you still have an opportunity left to try to drive and score for a touchdown? But you got to get a stop. Can't allow them to score here. It may just be a little bit of time left if they're able to stop them here on second and maybe even third down. So Toledo goes west here, a minute and 17 seconds from getting to two and one before they return to the glass bowl next week. And they will see BYU, that game exclusively available on ESPN+. Western Michigan, their next opponent, went to the Carrier Dome, a high-scoring game, but they lost 52-33 at the hands of Syracuse. Some Power 5 matchups today. Miami of Ohio jumped out to a 5-0 lead against Ohio State. And lost 76-5. And then Buffalo, they beat Temple today, 38-22. Yeah. And Buffalo hung close 30 minutes against Penn State earlier this year. We get a chance to see Buffalo next week. Buffalo. We'll be traveling to Oxford, Oxford Ohio. yeah, to see Buffalo and Miami of Ohio. Spending a couple weeks seeing some Mac opponents. Third and goal. Kobach gets split out. It's Guadani into the fray, and he stopped at the six. Bring out the field goal unit. Kick a field goal. Have about 20 seconds to left. And they've got 20, their, 25. their last time out in their back <laughs> pocket here. Oh, they, how, they, they, they kept it, huh? <laughs> oh, how the fates have turned, right? Because Toledo avoided penalties by calling two of their timeouts in the third quarter. And here they are up three, half a minute to go. And they've got their last one. Colorado State, with their schedule after this, if they lose, they'll fall to one and three. Utah State in a very intriguing game with their next two opponents, as a matter of fact, the Aggies and San Diego State. And then they'll go to New Mexico, visit Fresno State, see UNLV Air Force. Had a Air really Force. good game with Boise State last night. Injury hampered them. And then Wyoming on the road. Always a difficult place to play. And finishing with Boise State. 
quite a challenge for Colorado State, which under Mike Bobo in their first three years finished with a seven and six record last year, though, three and nine. And trying to best that mark this year. So it's Evan Davis, the freshman who has the tall task of replacing Jamison Vest, leading kicker in Toledo's history, but no worries about him from head coach Jason Candle with how hard he works. And the short try is good. Looked like that one's almost tipped. That was a dart. <laughs> they almost got it. So now look, 31 seconds left. How about a kicker with a sleeve? <laughs> Now that doesn't shout swag. I don't know what does. Swag. Gotta have a little bit of swag, right? Gotta have a little bit, but now, first of all, you need a deep kick. That's the first thing. No timeouts left for Colorado State. So it's about just launching. Now we get a chance to see the arm of Patrick O'Brien. I've seen teams do more with less. Did you watch Houston Tulane on Thursday night? I sure did. Never say never. Never say never. Never say never. seconds for the Rams with the game on the line and no timeouts they need 75 yards and I don't want to say you just go prevent here but remember nobody gets behind you if I'm a defensive backs coach this is what I tell my guys if I can't read the back of his name or his nameplate I'm not deep enough okay I want to see everything and keep it in front of me no one gets behind me They'll send three and drop eight. They test the middle of the field and the completion to Trey McBride. So a huge gain on first down gets them to the 46 yard line as they rush to the line and spike to stop the clock at 24 seconds. I said it before, Mike, it, I've seen teams do more with less. And you talk about the first play of a drive and you're already past midfield. They need a touchdown. We know that. They were in a similar situation looking to score from about this position end of the first half. And we saw Nate Craig Myers come up with the catch just shy of the goal line. O'Brien. Desperation time completes the pass at the 35 yard line. 16 seconds. The Rams need a touchdown. And they've got 15 seconds to line something up. You think you got about two plays, right? Maybe. So I think I try to take one more shot at the middle of the field and be have enough time to clock it, which gives me a little bit closer of a chance to make a shot at the end zone. I don't take my shot at the end zone now. I try to get one more chunk play of 10 yards or more where the clock stops. Against a three-man rush, O'Brien is flushed out of the pocket, incomplete. Took six seconds there. I think now you guys got time for one more play. I think that's it. You got to take the shot at the end zone here or a quick out route, but still, it's only going to get you maybe five, six yards closer. I think you got to take your shot at the end zone now. Nine seconds left. It's been a wild game tonight. Almost 700 yards of offense for Colorado State. They go with the out and pick up a small chunk there to Cameron Butler to set themselves up six seconds and realistically one shot to try and win it. Well, they, they did it in three seconds. So could that get them a little bit closer if they tried that again? I don't know if I would do that. 
I would say right now, just chuck it to the end zone. Hopefully that you've got enough guys with enough ability to get up and go get it. They do look to the sidelines again. The clock has two seconds left. And you forget that was a fourth down play. So if he drops it, the game would have been over. <laughs> that was a fourth down. That was very a little tricky there. They get away with it. But that was a fourth down play. He drops that. He drops that pass. The game's over. So now you've got one play left to the end zone. So Brian thrust into action last week. A first-time starter tonight. And the game's final play of regulation. Across the middle. Pass caught. Ball is loose and stopped just short. Toledo's defense holds. <laughs> First of all, completion. And a lateral forward which we know is not allowed. So a terrific catch by E.J. Scott. And then he tries to fumble it forward, but terrific job by Toledo building a wall at the goal line and not allowing Scott to break free for a touchdown. The end of the first half, a Hail Mary that comes up just shy and with the game on the line, they come up short again. Toledo is a winner. They'll be returning home to Ohio real early Sunday morning. Banged up a little bruised, <laughs> but happy that they got the win. So on behalf of our entire crew, my partner, Kirk Morrison, I'm Mike Cousins saying thanks for watching Toledo 41, Colorado State 35. So long from Fort Collins, it's on to college football final.